Well, you've uh, been spoiled with lions and leopard today. We've been able to show you a kill. We were able to show you a kill as well. Have a look. Here we've got a green orb spider that's just killed a giant fly, comparatively speaking. And what is quite incredible is the fact that the spider had to... Oh, no, it's not dead yet, the fly. It's still busy being envenomated. And what's interesting is about this spider spent about a minute or two just evaluating where it was going to be the best place to bite this particular fly and chose to come in from the underside of the fly and bites it very close to the head. There we're looking at it now. And the fly put up quite a big fight, but its wings are stuck on the web, which made it a little bit more difficult for it to flap about. And really, once it was bitten, that was around about it, I think, for this particular fly. And what a meal this spider is going to have. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if this spider actually envelops this particular fly in silk, which is quite often what these orb spiders do is they will bite and then immobilize the prey vic or prey in, in, a, in a circle of silk. When you pull back, just watch out you're resting on the web here. That was just me speaking to Craig to get you these fantastic shots. We sometimes have to get quite close to the web and what we don't want to do is break this web and disturb the spider. And luckily we haven't. Well done there, Craig. <laughs> Looks good. Your dismount was 10 out of 10. <laughs> Just have a look at how beautiful that spider is. Now, you can see that in this particular spider's web, there are three flies. Now, we've been going on for about a year, probably close to about two years now, about the volume of flies over the last two years. Something that I haven't seen in the last 18 years of me being in the park. I have never known the fly volume to be what it is. And I've got a theory about it in that with the decline in us, us, us approaching, with the decline in rainfall and with us approaching the drought last year, we had a couple of years where there wasn't enough water, there wasn't enough uh, uh, insect life to sustain the top tier predators, to sustain the spiders. And I think what's happened is the spider numbers have crashed and with that the resurgence or, or the, the massive increase in fly numbers coupled with all the carcasses that we had last year and we've just got this unbelievable load of flies. Seeing these spiders here definitely is a big positive and I think the more spiders we see the less flies we'll see. But in any case on that note why don't we go and send you over to uh, I think hang on sorry Let's just have a look at this quickly. This fly is now dead, it looks like. And there the spider is now walking around the fly rather than spinning its prey. What usually happens, oh, there we go, it's spinning it. And is now, it'll larder it, talking about lardering. There we go, the spider will now immobilize the fly. Look at that. Instead of spinning the fly because it's too big, the spider was walking around the fly with its silk. I've never actually seen that before. That's incredible. And now she'll tow the fly back to the center of her web where hopefully she'll start her breakfast. Oh, just absolutely amazing. There she goes. She's now pulling at her web, setting her snares again. The spider will literally catch as many things as she can. Spiders, especially the orb spiders, are well known for lardering their prey. And what it does is two things. It gives her a food source, but it also creates a sort of visual impact for large predators. Not to walk through the web and disturb it when it's got all her food items in. Because if a giraffe or a kudu had to come through here now, the spider's web will be broken and it, uh, she will actually lose the fly that she spent so much energy and effort in getting and she doesn't want that at all so she's trying to create as much visual impact there as what she can right, so back to those fly numbers and that i think what's going to happen is it'll follow a curve typical curve as the fly numbers increase uh, and have increased and of course the weather returning to a point where these spiders are able to live here again the they, their numbers will increase as their numbers increase they'll get better at catching all the flies and the fly numbers will decrease and so we'll move through these cycles it's called a predator prey relationship it happens all throughout the, the the animal kingdom prey numbers rise predators 
learn how to catch them or their numbers increase, whatever the case may be, prey number, prey number d uh, d uh, uh, decrease. Watch out, yeah. There we go. Prey numbers decrease, and uh, and so then do predators following that. It's less prey, it's less food for the predators, and then it carries on in this endless cycle. Red, you just asked me if there's a specific spot where the spider injects its venom. You know, up until I've watched this particular spider hunt this, uh, this fly, Red, I would have said no, it's pretty much where the spider gets to. But to be honest with you, this spider spent easily about a minute just being in the vicinity of this fly. Obviously, it's a massive piece of prey. And she very carefully selected where she was going to... Uh, where she was going to bite the fly. And when she made her move, it was directly underneath the fly's head and she bit it and held on as tightly as what she could. The fly went into a bit of a frenzy and then seemed to settle down as it got itself more entangled. But the, fly, the, the spider's venom has completely incapacitated that fly at the moment. And it took probably around about 30 seconds or so Obviously a spider's venom does a couple of things. It not only kills the prey, but it also starts to liquefy the inside of that prey item. So at the moment the fly is dead, but also what's happening is the spider's venom is liquefying the inside of that fly, making it into sort of a fly milkshake. And what will happen there is, what's the spider doing? Looks like she's cutting loose pieces of prey there. She's going to go and fetch another fly. Let's see, there's another, how interesting. No, now she's inspecting it. What are you doing? She's now carried it to the middle. Let's see if she goes and fetches the other fly which she's got larded up in the top right hand side of the, the web. Let's see what she does. So there, let's see what she's going to do here. Yep, she's going straight back to her other prey. Isn't that incredible? She knows exactly where it is. Or is she busy fixing her web here? Yeah, it looks like she's actually fixing her web. Obviously that fly would have caused a major disturbance to her orb web, creating a big hole in it. And look, she's cutting her web. She's cutting it. There she cuts another strand. She's cut another strand. Winter Prism, you've asked me how big will this spider get? This is as big as what she'll get. Let's see what she does now. She may actually cut her whole web and take her food away. Let's see what she does. She's cutting another strand. There she's cut another strand. You know what I think she's doing, and this is just a prediction of mine, is that rather than lose the prey to an impala or or wildebeest or whatever walking through you, she's actually going to go and take her food with her to the closest branch. So she's now collected her food. There she's tying them now together. She's banding them together. This is so interesting. Let's see if she can carry both, both on her silken line behind her. Yes, she's now towing it on one leg. That'd be the same as me towing a wildebeest on my big toe. No, she's hung them again. Then she's collecting webs, collecting, snipping them off, snipping again. I think that's exactly what the spider is doing. I think what she's doing is she's cutting her web. Then she cuts again. That is amazing. You know what a privilege it is to spend time with these little marvels in the bush. To Cedar, you wanted to know how they cut their web. Cedar, she, um, she will just bite it, to be honest with you. She will, she will bite it and it will snip the web. In some cases, the spiders will actually eat their web again. I don't think that this is the case in this particular spider. What is interesting is that she's, you see how she's stretched out there now? Now she's, she keeps on moving her her larder from one strand to another. There we go. She's cut the bottom strands. Okay, just be careful, Craig, because now I can blow into you. 
She's now, oh, there she goes and fetches her other fly. Let's see if she takes that back to her larder. No, she's going to cut the strand. I think she's going to cut the main strand now. No, still not. All right, let's see. She's busy dragging her prey up to her. There she goes. Look at that. Look how she reeled it in. How strong must she be? Easily, that fly plus the other fly, you're looking at three times her body weight. Look at that. There she goes. Now she's taking her groceries with her to the leaf, as predicted, and she's going to spend the rest of the day eating her food in the safety of this leaf. That is the sighting of the day, everybody. Well, for me at least, anyway. Aurora.